I agree with you. I want to thank everyone for coming out tonight. I want to thank you for the time to introduce um, our fellow members to our board of directors. I will ask each and every stand as I introduce and remain standing until the full board is introduced. I ask the audience to please hold your applause until all seven directors are introduced. Daniel yeah. House, representative of the one consistent in Spice Valley and Marion Township, Lawrence County. Daniel was appointed to the board in 2020. Daniel currently serves as the board secretary treasurer and completed his traditional cooperative director training this year. The director from the district two is Randy Roberts. Randy represents the membership residing in Washington and Crawford counties. He has been a member of the board since 1989. Randy, as previously announced, served as board president. The district three director is Dan Easton. This degree consists of Northeast and Orleans Townships of Orange County and Bowen Township of Orange County. Dan has been a member of the board since 1991 and as a board director past president. Rodney Hacker is the director for District 4, consisting of Orangeville and Northwest Townships of Orange County. Rodney has been a director since 2001 and he has been our representative on the board of directors of our statewide. That's IEC and now serves as a representative on the Hoosier Energy Board. Rodney has served on the Hoosier Energy Board since 2020 and currently serves on the Employee Relations and Finance and Audit Committees. Rodney obtained his Director of Goals Certificate for 2022, which is the highest level of training the Director of Ted. Ben Lindsay represents District 5, consists of the Prince Lick of Jackson Township of Orange County and a portion of Martin County. Ben has served on our board since 1998. Brian Hopkins represents District 6, consistent with Pebble and Greenfield Township of Orange County. Brian was elected to the board in 2003. He currently serves as the board vice president. Brian now represents the board on the Indian Electric Cooperative Board, that's IC, uh, with the transition that occurred in 2020. George Key represents District 7, consistent with Stanford Street. Southeast Township of Orange County. George was elected in his first term on the board in 2010. This is your board of directors. Let's give them a round of applause. <laughs> now, I'd like to recognize the special guest in attendance tonight. Special guest, please stand as a group after reading the list. Brian Savage is here. He, uh, he represents CFC. That's where we get all the capital to build. Our fiber project, he's the regional vice president. Kyle Colson, he's member relations specialist for Hoosier Energy. Ben Turner is the video producer for Hoosier Energy. Lynette Craig, she's the administrative assistant from IEC. Mike Owens is the key accounts manager from Hoosier Energy. Trent Cooper, he's the owner and operator of EDC Contracting. Brian Music, he's the construction manager for Millennium. And Lawrence Turner, he is the resident engineer for Fiber Center who does all the design work for the Fiber Project. Please join me in welcome our guests. Thank you. I'm now calling Danny House to continue with the Secretary and Treasurer. Good evening. I, Daniel Houchin, certify that I am the Secretary Treasurer of Orange County Rural Electric Members Cooperation. I further certify that the official notice of this annual member membership meeting is mailed to all the members of the cooperative on May 17, 2023. As of the mailing of this note, these notices, there were 6,589 members of the cooperative. The RMC bylaws specify 2% of the membership, or 132 members, constitutes a quorum to permit transaction of business at meetings of the members. Therefore, I certify a quorum is present. Condensed statements of the cooperative's financial performance for the year ending December 31st, 2022 were included with the mailing of the official notice. Please enjoy this video summarizing that information now. Welcome to the 2023 Orange County REMC Annual Meeting. As a member owner of this electric cooperative, it's important for you to review the annual report. 
This report was also published in the monthly newsletter and is available on our website, www.myremc.coop. The condensed statement of operation and the condensed balance sheet provide a review of the finances of Orange County REMC from 2021 through 2022. The expenses and the margins of your cooperative are detailed here. The general statistics represent the size and scope of your electric cooperative. Last year, the co-op served an average of 8,145 electric meters, which used nearly 118 million kilowatt hours of electricity, which was delivered to our members over 1,130 miles of line in our service territory. Like most rural electric companies, 75% of the Orange County REMC revenue comes from our residential and farm members. Commercial and industrial accounts make up another 8% of our annual revenue. As members pay their electric bills over the past year, this graph shows where that money was applied. 53% of your electric bill is used to purchase electricity from our power supplier, Hoosier Energy. The cost to deliver that power to local homes and businesses is represented by the 23% of your bill that pays for the operation and maintenance of your electric co-op. The next graph shows the average cost of electricity over the years. We have worked hard to keep the price consistent, just under 14 cents per kilowatt hour for several years. In 2022, Orange County REMC residential members used an average of 1,077 kilowatt hours each month, which is very similar to previous years. The final graph shows the total utility plant, or how much your cooperative is worth when totaling the book value of buildings, substation equipment, transformers, poles, trucks, electric distribution lines, and other equipment. Orange County REMC is now worth $69.4 million. In addition, Orange County Fiber, which is the telecommunications division of Orange County REMC that was established five years ago, ended 2022 worth $31.1 million in total utility plant. We have now constructed over 1,500 miles of strand and fiber and have placed 7,263 drops. Of the margins generated by Orange County Fiber in 2022, 2.5 million of the $3.5 million was transferred to Orange County REMC for the offsetting of the additional expenses incurred by the electric co-op. We are pleased to share that in just four years of having active accounts, Orange County Fiber is generating positive margins. The success Orange County Fiber is seeing is only because you, our members, signed up for our service, just like our members did when Orange County REMC was formed. Orange County REMC remains focused on the same mission we have always had. We now have a new perspective as we continue to provide internet and phone services to our members and beyond. As Secretary Treasurer, I have reviewed the official audit of the cooperative's financial statements, and I can report that the cooperative is in compliance with all operating agreements and financial covenants as the year end, December 31st, 2022. A copy of the minutes of the 2022 annual meeting is printed in this program you received when you registered for the meeting this evening. If there are no additions or corrections, I will entertain a motion to dispense with the reading of the minutes and approve them as presented. Got a motion on the floor? By the second. Got a motion and a second. All those vote, please say aye. aye. Those opposed? Thank you. I now call on our general counsel, Mr. John Paul Eisen, for the election of your board of directors. Good evening, I am John Paul Isom, I'm General Counsel for Orange County REMC. According to the Orange County REMC bylaws, it is the obligation of each incumbent director seeking re-election to submit a letter of intent to the Secretary of the Board of Directors not less than 120 days before the annual meeting. Those seeking re-election this year include from District 1, Daniel Houchin, and from District 5, Ben Lindsay. The incumbent directors meet all requirements to run for re-election. 
not less than 45 days prior to the annual meeting, a minimum of 15 members may make other nominations in writing over their signatures. In both districts this year, there were no other nominations. Based upon there being no other nominations, Districts 1 and District 5, Daniel Houchin and Ben Lindsay, are hereby elected to another three-year term as directors for Orange County REMC. I now turn it over to Randy Roberts to continue the meeting. Two thousand twenty-three represents the eighty-sixth anniversary of the founding of Orange County REMC. We hope you enjoy being able to gather this evening and engage with the staff and other REMC members. A fundamental element of a co-op is the retirement of capital credits. The retirement of capital credits remains a priority for this board, and for the seventh consecutive year, the board voted to continue the retirements this year. For the third year in a row, the board approved the retirement of multiple years by retiring the years 1972 through 1974. This retirement will give back $345,281 to those who had electricity from 1972 until 1974. With this decision, Orange County RMC has retired nearly 1.7 million of capital credits back to its members since 2017. When you receive your capital credit check, that complete the circle of initial membership to annual member value. 2022 was a year of escalating wholesale power costs. Natural gas costs rose over 80%. Coal prices were up 200%. And forward power on the market rose 126%. These costs were passed along to Orange County and continue to keep our overall prices higher than we would like. The wholesale power cost tracker has increased, but we have not had to raise the base rates. These rates have remained the same since 2011, and the analysis that was performed earlier this year shows that with the help of fiber, these rates should remain unchanged to the near future. Now I'd like to show a video that speaks of how our industry is changing, and it can better serve you in the future. Electric vehicles, residential solar, and fiber are all ways the industry at the regional and national level are changing. Orange County RMC is very well positioned to take advantage of these industry shifts and ensure the shifts are beneficial to its members. After the video, Matt will come up and share an update about our fiber project and how it's changed the perspective of cooperation. Cooperatives hold a distinct place among electric utilities, powering more than half of the country's landmass and owned by the 42 million Americans they serve. Powering homes and businesses is becoming more complex every day. At Orange County REMC, we are creating solutions, cooperative solutions. Twenty twenty two proved to be a challenging year for the energy industry. A combination of global and national issues severely impacted supply costs, creating one of the most volatile environments for fuel and power prices in the last twenty years. Orange County REMC is meeting these challenges head on. Proactive strategies are smoothing cost pressures on rates, protecting against volatility in power markets and advancing new technologies for a smarter, more resilient power grid. As the nation continues to transition to more renewable energy resources, reliability is more important than ever. It's more than just power generation, poles and wires to prepare for the needs of tomorrow. Emerging technologies, distributed energy resources, and automation play a key role. It's the grid of the future, built for cooperative communities. At Orange County REMC, we're developing, testing and customizing programs to better serve our member consumers. These programs provide immediate savings to you, our member consumers, while also generating important data on how these technologies work on our system to ensure continued reliability and affordability. These efforts are led by a staff of dedicated, 
service-oriented individuals working day and night to safely keep the lights on. Our people have always been and will always be our greatest asset. None of our initiatives can succeed without our employees and their commitment to safety and continuous improvement. We will continue to invest in our people, building on their knowledge to prepare Orange County REMC for the future. Just as we banded together to bring power to rural Indiana so many years ago, we're still working to make a better life for our member communities. We continue to carry that philosophy forward today. Orange County REMC is proud to be your trusted energy partner. Together, we've faced tough times in the past and currently find ourselves in the midst of a challenging transition. The grid is changing quickly and becoming more complex each day. Orange County REMC will continue to tackle these complex issues that arise, striking that all-important balance between affordability and reliability. It's what our member consumers expect, and it's what we'll deliver. Cooperative solutions for cooperative communities. Good evening again. I want to thank everyone for coming out tonight, sharing each other's company and enjoying, you know, evening away from the everyday grind. Uh, I just checked my phone right before I came up here and there was 424 members registered for tonight's meeting. And that is, again, I announced it before, but that's a record that we've ever had since we've been keeping track. So thank you guys for coming out. It, it's great to see everyone. And to explain a little bit of that, that number, uh, go ahead. It, it may be obvious, but that number doesn't mean there's 424 people here. The 424 registered members means that's how many households are here. So if we average you know, three or four people per household, that's how many people's here. So I think we've got 800 chairs set out and uh, I see just nearly every one of those filled. And um, that's really what makes a co-op, um, a co-op is to see this right here. So really appreciate it. In the next few minutes, I wanna recognize some highlights of this past year. Behind every highlight, there is a co-op employee or a group of co-op employees primarily responsible. And I want to recognize them. In the past 12 months, there have been 1,972 fiber services added to the network and 2,346 total services added. The fiber network now serves nearly 10,000 customers and members. A couple of services we are particularly proud of are the Orleans School Corporation, and the Orleans Library. We are proud to be their internet and IT services provider. Over the past year, there have been nearly 800 members who have signed up for service that did not take the service initially. We have an in-house maintenance crew that does these installations, and they have been extremely busy. Travis Cole, Tyler McKeegan, Wesley Nicholson, and Carson Staley are responsible for these new member installs. Good job, guys. I'll get off script a little bit, but I was asked today if, if I thought, if we ever thought the fiber would be as big as it was. And so I, I remember the number, it was 3,746. That's how many people we thought we would serve when we first started. So to be nearly, you know, I wanted to tell you 10,000, but it's not, it's 9,600 or so. But to be almost at 10,000 customers already four years in is, is just nothing short of amazing. It's a huge challenge, but Billy Chastine, I'm sorry, I, I jumped off script here. We are working towards the goal of 3,000 installs this year. It's a huge challenge, but Billy Chastine, Charlie Rollins, Michael Anderson, Denny Cameron, Michael Charles, Matt Figg, Michael Holt, Wyatt Hopper, Iris Mayrina, Josh Nelson, and Adam Poole, they work every day to see that we get there. No offense to any of those good guys, but in order for them to even know where to go to coordinate a drop or install a new service, there has to be someone before that getting all of the required information. That is thanks to Marcy Bennett, Stacy Busey, Ashley Terrell, Carla Beekler, Barbara Bullock, Haley Deckard, Morgan Gaddis, Megan Johnson, 
and Emily Leone. Great job, girls. Not surprisingly, the old adage holds true even at Orange County RMC. Behind every great man, there is a great woman. It is the same way with the new electric service. Before our linemen can go out and repair or install a new service, someone has to speak to a member and assist in coordinating the work. Our linemen are great. They have played a huge role in making the fiber project a success while never letting the electric facilities lack in any way. They lead by example. One way they do that is from the safety perspective. Recently, our linemen voluntarily took the NRECA Commitment to Zero Contacts Phase Two survey. This survey asked them to answer a number of questions related to how they practice the four life-saving rules in their daily work. You've seen those four life-saving rules in the live line demo today. These answers were compiled by NRECA confidentially and then reviewed by our statewide staff with alignment. Plans of action were created to improve on any gaps that were identified in our work practices. Orange County RMC was either the, I can't get a, a clear answer, but it was either the first or the second cooperative, I know we was at least the second, in the state of Indiana to take this tough, honest self-assessment. I can proudly share with you that this event went, ex went extremely well. I can honestly say that the Orange County RMC linemen are second to none. Great job, guys. Now shifting gears from the boots on the ground to behind the scenes. It's no secret that starting the fiber project has taken a lot of capital. The money had to come from somewhere. CFC, who is represented here tonight, and I, I announced uh, Brian Stavish, has been that somewhere for the co-op. Brian and his boss, Dan Kaywood, have been great partners in getting this thing pulled off. They keep close track of the capital needs and progress the project is making and ensure we have what we need when we need it. On the other side of that is the grants we have been awarded. Every dollar that we can obtain from grants is a dollar that we don't have to borrow. We have been awarded over $20 million of grants over the years greatly improving the business case and financial position of the fiber division. We have done all that work, the writing of the grants and all the related reporting in-house. Much of that $20 million can be attributed to the work of a guy that not many people know, and that is Don Renner. Thanks, Don, for everything you've done for the co-op. I think I was not clear on his name, it's Don Renner. If you see Don, thank him. The cooperative is proud to sponsor students in and around our service territory. The co-op is sponsoring three students at Camp Kilowatt in Brookston, Indiana this year. They are, and if you are here, I would like for you just to, just to stand and everyone will just clap for you. And hopefully it's not too embarrassing, but we wanna recognize these great young, young students. They are Catherine Noble and Eli Morris from Orleans and Caleb Terrell from Mitchell. I see Eli there in the middle. We are sponsoring one student for a youth tour. This is a week's visit to our nation's capital where students gain a better understanding of the electric cooperative. I think I said state's capital. My script says nation's capital. They're going to Washington, D.C. for a week and they gain a better understanding of their electric cooperative and government. Alexis Flynn from Orleans is representing Orange County RMC this year on this trip. Is Alexis here? Give her a round of applause. Anyway. As part of the Operation Roundup program, we provide up to six $750 scholarships each year. This year, those scholarships award, award, were awarded to Eliza Allen from Paoli, Geneva Clark, Michaela McCabe, and Emily Quackenbush from Orleans, and Kai Struther and Braxton Sprouse from West Washington. Let's give them a hand if any of them are here. <laughs> Finally, we'd like to share a few pictures of a trip one of our linemen took back in late April, early May of this year. 
Michael Newland volunteered to go with a group of co-op folks down to a village in Guatemala, Pina Roja. This project brought electricity for the first time in their lives to 26 homes. That's amazing to think that you, they got electricity for the first time in 2023. Michael is the fourth Orange County RMC lineman to participate in this statewide initiative called Project Indiana. This trip is the epitome of what makes a cooperative a cooperative. From talking with Michael, not only did he change the lives of the folks of Pina Roja, but this changed his life too. Thank you. So now we're gonna do service awards. We do, we do them every year. Um, and the, the purpose is just to recognize those that have a specific milestone um, in, their, in their service for the co-op. Of course, that purpose has expanded over the past few years and include fiber services, which makes it even more important that we have highly skilled and dedicated workforce. Tonight is my privilege to recognize 11 employees and two directors for their years of service to the co-op. I ask that applause be held until all employees are up here in, in front of the stage. As I call your name, if you please come and receive your plaque and, uh, and stand here in front so everyone can put a face with a name. And, and I know they're gonna kill me for that, but that's, that's okay. The first employee is Stacy Busey. She has five years of service. Stacy was part of the acquisition of NetSurf USA and Calls USA back in 2018. Stacy had worked for NetSurf and Call USA for five years before the acquisition, doing the billing for the companies and coordinating the managed services contracts. She now works in the fiber division and does the legacy wireless billings and helps schedule and coordinate all the new fiber and fixed wireless installations. Thank you, Stacy. Josh, Josh Frank, five years of service. Josh was part of the acquisition as well back in 2018. He had worked for NetSurf and Calls USA for three years before the acquisition, obtaining the knowledge of VoIP and helping manage the service contracts. Josh's primary role now is in our managed services area and also is our voice over IP expert. Josh coordinates the new phone installs that we do as well as assists our network administrator. Thank you, Josh. Ryan, Ryan Flynn is being recognized for five years of service. Ryan was part of the acquisition as well in 2018. He had worked for eight years in, at NetSurf and Calls USA before the acquisition, doing wireless installs and tower builds and tower climbing. Ryan is now our certified in-house tire climber and trainer and does fixed wireless installations. Thank you, Ryan. Charlie Rollins is being recognized for five years of service. As the theme continues, he was part of the acquisition that happened in 2018. Charlie had worked for NetSurf and Calls USA for five years doing wireless installs, cable installs. Um, he, he managed folks, uh, managed the workload of others. Charlie is now our fiber operations manager, leading the construction efforts of our fiber project and coordinating the drops and the initial signups of new customers. Charlie lives in Shoals with his wife, Becca, and four kids, Abby, Maverick, Eliana, and Renly. Thank you, Charlie. <laughs> Matt Figg is being recognized for five years of service. Matt was part of the acquisition of NetSurf and Calls USA back in 2018. Matt now works in our fiber division, doing fiber installs for our new customers and members. Thank you, Matt Figg. Irish Mayrina, five years of service. Iris was part of the acquisition as well. Iris worked for 11 years for NetSurf and Calls USA while obtaining a degree in IT support from Vincennes University. Iris now works in our fiber division, doing fiber installs to new customers and members. Thank you, Iris. <laughs> Hannah, Carter. Hannah Carter is being recognized for five years of service. Hannah interned for us while in high school back in 2017 and 2018. This led to a full-time employment in November of 2018. 
Hannah started her career as a member services representative and now leads our human resources department. Hannah lives in Orleans with her husband, Jake, and their dog, Bear. Thank you, Hannah. Crystal Silverthorne, five years of service. Crystal is our custodian here at Orange County RMC, and she is always up for helping others when needed. Crystal enjoys gardening, crafting, and spending time with her family and friends. She and her husband, Mark, just celebrated 30 years of marriage, and they have three children and 10 grandchildren and live here in Orleans. Thank you, Crystal. Brandon Bambush, 10 years of service. Brandon was hired as a groundman in February of 2013 and was promoted to apprentice lineman in the fall of 2013, at which time he was accepted into the HEATS apprenticeship program. Brandon received a certificate certifying him as a journeyman lineman in October of 2017. Brandon is married and has three kids and lives in Claysville. Thank you, Brandon. Scott Strange, 10 years of service. Scott was also hired as a groundman in February of 2013 and promoted to apprentice lineman in the fall of 2013, at which time he was accepted into the HEATS program. Scott received his certificate of certifying him as a journeyman lineman in October of 2017. Scott is married and has two kids and lives in Paoli. Thank you, Scott. <laughs> Misty Tincher, 20 years of service. Misty was hired in January 2003 as a member services representative. Later that year, Misty was promoted to accountant, the position she still holds today. Misty has completed the RUS Borrow Accounting course, which doesn't sound like a lot, but is equivalent to learning a foreign language. Her role has expanded greatly when we added fiber and wireless services. Her workload has basically tripled or quadrupled. Misty and her family live on their family farm near Orleans. Thank you, Misty. Now we will recognize the directors. The first is Brian Hawkins for 20 years of service. Brian, Brian is currently working, serving his seventh term on the board of directors representing District 6. Brian qualified as a cooperative, credentialed cooperative director in 2007 and has held all the board offices twice with the exception of president, which he is now the vice president. Brian is currently serving as vice president, as I said. Brian and his wife, Nanette, live near Pale. Thank you, Brian. Ben Lindsay, 25 years of service. Ben joined the board of directors in 1998 and represents District 5. Ben earned his CCD certification in 2007 and has held the offices of Secretary Treasurer, Vice President, and President during his tenure on the board. Ben and his wife, Jan, live near French Lake. Thank you, Ben. I don't know if you guys heard, but I asked everyone to line up, and sometimes it don't, don't work out. But I really do want to recognize these folks for their years of service. Let's please give them one more round of applause.